A ball bearing x of mass 2m is projected vertically upwards with a speed of u. So speed is upwards, speed of u. A ball bearing y of mass m, so here is y, this has a mass of m, that's projected at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with a speed of 2u. So here is the velocity, the velocity is a bit bigger, 2u, and then we're told the angle to the horizontal is 30 degrees. We're told that air resistance is negligible, and we're asked which of the following statements is correct. The horizontal component of y's velocity is u. Okay, let's work that out. We can use Sokotoa. We can use the shortcut where if we have the adjacent, we can just straight away call that side hypotenuse times cos 30. And if you're not sure how I got that, just use Sokotoa. If I were to work that out, if I did 2 times cos 30, that would give me root 3. So this is root 3 u. So therefore, it is not option A. The horizontal component of y's velocity is root 3 u, not u. Option B. The maximum height reached by y is half that reached by x. So maximum height is determined by the vertical speed and the vertical speed only. And later on, after we've gone through the question, I can show you why that is the case, if you like. So to work out the initial vertical velocity of y, so we're trying to work out this component here. Again, using Sokotoa, this is the opposite side. So it'll be 2u sine 30. 2 sine 30 is equal to 1. So this will just be u. OK, so the initial vertical velocity of y is the same as the initial vertical velocity of x. So that means that vertically, they do the exact same thing. They travel to the same maximum height. They take the same time to go from the floor all the way up and then back down. So for that reason, it can't be b. The maximum height of y is not different to that of x. They would reach the ground at the same time as one another. The time of flight would be the same. That's not determined by horizontal motion. Time of flight is solely determined by vertical motion. And then for option D, x reaches the ground first. Well, that's similar to option B. The time of flight, again, is just determined by the vertical velocity, which is the same for both particles. OK, so if that didn't make complete sense, then what we could do is we could draw out a SUVAT table and think about perhaps a couple of different scenarios. One where we're trying to work out the maximum height of the object and the other scenario where we're trying to work out the time taken to go from the floor all the way up and then back down again. OK, so let's say we have the initial vertical velocity is u. And let's say we are going from the ground all the way up, and then the object is falling back down to the floor. So the vertical displacement in that case, if we're ending up in the same point vertically, that we are starting, the vertical displacement is zero. Acceleration is minus g. Let's define upwards as positive. And let's call the time t. So the equations that link these things together is s equals ut plus half a t squared. So then s is zero. So I will factorize out the t as well u is just u, and then we have the a which becomes minus g. So I'm actually going to change this plus into a minus, so it becomes minus a half g t. Again, I just factorize out the t and change the acceleration to minus g. You get two solutions from this. We get t is equal to 0, and we also end up with the second bracket being equal to 0. So u minus a half g t is zero, and when we rearrange this for time, we'll end up with 2u over g. So what we see is that the time of flight is determined by the initial speed only. Acceleration due to gravity is a constant. The initial vertical velocity, which we're calling u, that's the initial vertical velocity, is the only thing that determines the time of flight. And similarly, if we were to alter this SUVAT table slightly, if we wanted to work out maximum height, the maximum height would be when the final vertical velocity is zero. So to work out maximum height, we could use v squared is equal to u squared plus 2as. 
v is 0, u is u, a is minus g, so I'm going to change this to minus 2gs, rearrange for s, and we get s is equal to u squared over 2g. Again, we see that the vertical displacement, the maximum height reached by the object, is determined just by the initial vertical velocity.